In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at an alternative approach, a sometimes inevitable and necessary approach, to articulating lines and phrases without using key switching instruments. So let's start with a little perspective on what key switching instruments do. When we use key switching instruments, what we're really doing, in a sense, is hocketing between individual recordings of different articulations. And what is hocketing? Well, it's an orchestration technique where a melody, or sometimes chords, are bounced around between different instruments or different instrument families. And here's an example of hocketing between some woodwinds and pizzicato strings. Now, if we look at this as a series of recorded MIDI tracks, we see a bunch of MIDI regions that are very sparsely populated with notes, but if we isolate those notes into individual regions, voila, now it's really clear that this is a bit of hocketing. And by way of analogy to key switching instruments, when we use them, what we're doing by switching articulations is, in effect, taking a line or phrase and hocketing between articulations. Now, to that effect, Here's a little string sketch which uses eight different articulations from a cinematic strings to full string ensemble key switching patch. And it's a patch I use for sketching pretty often. So the region in green is the one that's playing, but below them what I did was I copied the region and I cut all the individual articulations and just put them on separate tracks just for demonstration purposes so you can see which notes are triggering which articulations. And this display over here shows the change of articulation in real time. So this is, in effect, hocketing between samples but all within the same key switching plugin. Thing is, back in the old days when we didn't have key switching plugins, this approach is exactly how this kind of string part would have been realized in a mockup. Individual articulations would be loaded up on separate tracks, and you'd have to hock at the part between the different tracks. Sometimes the articulations would come from the same library, sometimes they'd come from a mixture of libraries, and perhaps even from outboard samplers. Now, as far as I'm aware, there isn't any kind of official term for this approach, and the term hocketing has a particular meaning in orchestration, but since the display sort of has a, a mosaic look to it, I'm going to just refer to this technique as mosaicing. Now I just have to figure out how to spell it. This is a technique that composers still use because, well, not every library includes key switching patches, and even when they do, they may not contain enough articulations or even the most appropriate articulations for the passage you're trying to realize. This is exactly the situation I ran into in the previous tutorial trying to articulate that cello passage. And it's not like that east-west solo cello is a bad sounding instrument, it just didn't have all the right articulations for that particular part. And those high notes didn't have the right emotional or tonal qualities, in fact the vibrato was way too fast for what I was looking for. So, the solutions I have here to get a great sounding cello part are numerous indeed, and they include, of course, looking for another sample library to realize the part with, one that perhaps, maybe even hopefully, has a key switching patch, because clearly, key switching is a really super convenient way to switch articulations and have the part end up on one track playing sounds out of one plugin. However, I've been through my libraries and I don't have a key switching patch that will let me express that part to my satisfaction. Now, of course, I could always take the approach of writing to the samples, which is something I talked about earlier in the course, but here I'm not willing to do that because I have this very specific thing in mind and I want to express it and I'm not willing to compromise. So the third choice is to use this mosaic technique and pass the notes between different sounds loaded up on different tracks, and in fact that's exactly what I ended up doing to arrive at the final cello part, which sounds like this. Now 
Now, the problem I was having with the original east-west key switching sound was that the notes in the middle didn't sound realistic. So I got rid of those notes, and I kept the first one and the last two. A total of three notes on one track. And then on this other track, I used my old standby 1999 Kirk Hunter Emerald solo cello sound. And I think together, the two make a pretty nice sandwich. And what's kind of funny is that the attack characteristic of the Kirk Hunter cello was such that it had the effect of making the part sound like it was playing more of a triplet figure. And the thing is, I really liked that, so I didn't try and correct it. I think one thing I've learned working with sample libraries is to sometimes leave the happy accidents alone. So I did. Now, I know that some composers worry that when you mix and match sample libraries like this, that the sounds won't match. And you know that sounds pretty plausible in theory. So here's an example of why <laughs> I don't subscribe to that theory. So that's what I was hearing in my head, and I don't know, maybe it was something I ate, or maybe it was because of something annoying I read on Facebook. But anyway, that's what I was hearing, and I couldn't get it from any one sample library, and I wasn't about to let any theory about how it's not good to mix and match sample libraries get in my way. So what's going on here is a flute part made up of five different libraries. We'll work backwards. Flute 5 is a crescendo performance, but it actually goes on for too long on its own, so I just stopped it short and dovetailed it into the next note, which is playing a sustained sound, which had a matching vibrato, which was great, and then I switched to another track that is hosting a key-switching flute sound that gave me the nice sharp staccatos and the flutter tongue effect. However, I wanted a nice, like, chip at the beginning and end of the flutter, so I superimposed staccato accents from yet another library and then back to library four for the longer melodic line using a sound that had a more intense vibrato and tonal attitude. And then over to library two, which has a completely different staccato character than all the others. And that was great for the repeated note bit. And then for the big chip at the end, I used flute three. So you got all that? Because there's going to be a quiz, you know. Here it is again with cliff notes. So there is some insight into my thought process. I think about what I want to express musically, and then I think of my sample libraries as one giant pool of articulations to draw from, and then I'll mix and match sample libraries absolutely freely, and in the process create a mosaic of articulations until I get what I want. And if I don't have a sample that has the specific articulation that I want, like the flutter tongue flute part that started and ended with an accent, I'll just make one as I did here by playing in the flutter tongue part and then adding the accents after the fact with a different sample library. Now, of course, it is more time consuming and unwieldy to create a musical phrase using this mosaic technique than it would be to use a key switching instrument and very conveniently switch between articulations. But that convenience comes with a price, and that price is expression. And that's because every key switching instrument is going to be limited not only to the number of articulations you can select, but also to the emotional qualities, the vibe, the style of that particular library. So when you use the mosaicing technique to produce a part, you free yourself of the inherent expressive limitations of any one sample library. 